Okay, welcome everybody back to another Gen Invest podcast. This is where we bring you inspiring, motivating, and empowering content to take your life to the next level. Obviously, with Gen Invest, everything is around money and money management. But obviously, there's five key principles that we believe in. One, get a mindset of money. Two, learn to manage your money. Three, learn how to earn more money. Number four, how to invest your money. And number five, how to build generational wealth. Now, obviously a lot of the podcasts we've been doing is about properties, but I'm gonna talk about how to earn more money because the more money that you earn, the more money that you can invest. Right now, one of the principles I wanna talk about today is obviously the rule of having multiple streams of income. Most people that I know, and most people that you know, um, unless you're in the right circles, will have one form of income, and that tends to be their job. Now, we believe, and I try to live by uh, having at least three streams of income coming in at any one time. So I've got my properties, I've got business, I've got earned income, uh, and I've got um, sideline things. So I've probably got about four streams of income coming in at any one time. The reason I say that, is that if you imagine most people, like a friend of mine only yesterday, so this is live and raw, only yesterday my friend's wife got made redundant. Like two weeks before they've been on holiday, everything is going well, she comes back on holiday, and now she's made redundant. Now they're worried about money, why? Because their number one stream of income comes from one source, and when that stops, people start to panic. But if you've got four streams of income coming in, you don't have to panic. All right, so I'm gonna show you one way how you can obviously develop a multiple stream of income. Okay, so where I get a lot of my information from uh, is reading, this is definitely one of the books that you should read. Okay, so a guy called Robert Kiyosaki and Cashflow Quadrant. I remember reading this book probably about 10 years ago uh, and a self-made millionaire told me to read this book probably, yeah, about 10, no, it's probably even a bit longer actually, about 15 years ago. This book totally transformed how I started to think about money and money management. Now one of the key things that he talks about is obviously the cash flow quadrant and this is the ways that you earn money. Now there's four four areas, you've got one as an employee, okay, so most people have a a traditional nine to five job and that's not a problem, you can earn good money here. You know, a footballer is an employee, right, so you're not, we're not, I'm not here to not, you know, being an employee and I know a lot of people do that. Another one is obviously being a uh, self-employed where you own your own job. So instead of going to work for someone, you work for yourself. So this tends to be like a dentist, a doctor, and people like that. The other thing that you've got then is a business owner, someone who's actually not doing the work but owns a system or a formula to make money. And then the other area then is an investor. Now I believe that you should be having at least three areas whether that be you have a business and you're an employee in your business, so you get paid from your business but also dividends, but also have investments, properties, shares, where you're having money come in. So multiple streams of income. So at the moment, you know, I have a business, okay, uh, I got a contract with a company, I'm an investor, so I've got three streams of income coming in. Now what we're gonna talk about today is how you can build a sideline business. Because a lot of people are like, I don't have the time to make money, you know, have a business, or I don't know if business is for me. I think everybody should have a sideline hustle, okay? A sideline business that you're doing whilst you're working, so there's less risk involved. And I'm gonna show you something that I've been doing, which is eBay. Now, the reason I chose eBay was because when I left the corporate world, I needed a car, so for years I've had a company car. Uh, and I was like, okay, so when I left the corporate world, they took the car back and I was like, I need a car. So obviously a part of my business is going around the country looking at properties. So I was like, okay, the car, I wanted a decent car, so I'm up and down on a motorway, so it's gonna cost me about 250 a month. So I was like, right, okay, I don't wanna take that money out of the business, I wanna be able to have a different stream of income coming in. So what I did was set up an eBay business. Now, everybody knows about eBay, um, but if you treat it like a business, there is serious money to be made. Now I'm gonna give you an example of what I've been doing in eBay. So my key thing was to pay for, I got a BMW, I wanted the eBay to pay for my BMW, all right, which is something that I did on the sidelines. So I'm gonna show you what I did with eBay. Now, my target was 250 pound per month, all right? That's what I wanted to do. So if we look at what I did over the last seven months. Now, remember this was not my full-time thing that I was doing, just something that I did, not even part-time, a couple hours a week. Right, so in that time I sold 176 items. 176 items. That's 25 items per month that I've been doing over the last seven months. Now, the profit that I made is 2,311 and 26 pence. And I will show you how I so precise in my numbers because I have a spreadsheet that I will send to you for free of how you can track your own eBay records. 
Now, so if you imagine the average profit that I was making per unit was about 13 pound, 13 pence. So I was making, based on those numbers, about 328 pound per month, okay, from eBay. That's after, you know, the purchase of the, the, the item, after paying shipping fees, after paying eBay fees, and I'll go through eBay fees in a minute. I was making 325, so that more than paid for my BMW. So happy days. So I didn't have to take it out of my main business. I didn't have to do anything like that. Now, out of the 176 items, I gotta say, it wasn't all, you know, upside. I did have five, item, five, five items that didn't make any money. So I actually made a loss. But on the average, I still made money. Now, here's the question I ask you. If you had an extra 328 pound per month, what could you do? Is that a holiday? Is that a nicer car? Is that, you know, uh, a loan, loan payment so you can put an extension on, on your house? What is that? And literally, I was making this, I would go to eBay once a week, buy loads of stock, put the pictures up, maybe, uh, I don't know, okay, maybe three, four hours a week, max. And obviously taking the stuff then to, to the post office, which was right by my door. Okay, so four hours a week, if that, I'd say probably even two hours a week, eight hours a month, Easy, 300. So if you imagine for one day, if you were earning a day, 328 pound, would you do it? I 100%, but most people won't watching this video. I don't know why, but you know, I throw it out there. So how did I make my money from eBay? This guy, Nike, this store, easy money to be made, right? Nike clearance stores are all over the country. Now I have not, okay, let me tell you now. Um, I said to myself, where can I buy stock? Cheap, Nike clearance stores. What does everybody wear? Trainers. So when I started to look at my market and what I was gonna sell on eBay, I wanted something that everybody wanted, whether that be in good times or bad, all right? Everybody wants trainers. Everybody that I'm, you know, uh, in this podcast room with, in this studio, well, everybody bar, actually, only two of us are actually wearing trainers. One person has his socks on and another person has slippers on. All right, okay, that, that's the studio that we in, all right? But most people will have some kind of trainers on, right? On their boot. And not everybody's wearing Nikes either. Oh, you wear Nikes? He's wearing Nikes, I got Nikes. You got, you got Nikes? You got, okay, four people in the room out of four all wear Nikes. So that proves my point. So one, everybody likes Nikes and everybody has to wear them. All right. But also at the clearance store, I could buy them cheap, which was important. So number one, find someone where you're going to go and start. But here's some of my key things to remember which you're going to sell on eBay. And I'm going to show you some of the profit that I was making per trainer. All right. Sell something that you like. The reason being, is that if I walked in a Nike store and I looked at the trainers, I'd say to myself, would I wear them? Would I wear them? And if I, if I had an inclination and gut feeling that I would wear them, I would buy them if the price was right. So I don't try to sell something I have nothing, that I have no knowledge about. But sell something that you enjoy or you like or you have some form of experience behind. So number one, sell things that you like. Number two, Buy low, sell high. If you want to get into business, this is a business principle. Buy low, sell high. So I would go to the clearance store and I was buying some Nike, Nike Air Maxes, right? 10 pound, 10 pounds. So guess what? I would go in there and I'd buy 20 of these things, knowing that even if I sold them at 20 pounds, I was going to make a profit. So buy low, sell high. Remember there are eBay charges. Now, eBay charges around 13%, okay, for every transaction that you make. So on average, I put in about 13%. That includes my eBay, PayPal, everything, all right? So 13%, but imagine you only pay if you sell. So that you only, you know, there is no startup costs, no major things like that. You don't need a shop window. eBay does it all for you. Second thing, take great pictures. I've got a Google phone, I've got it on me, uh, recommended by the cameraman behind here. Amazing phone. I would get rid of an iPhone, just plugging it out there for all you I, uh, iPhone users and lovers of Apple. Google Pixel, best phone, good pictures. The reason I say that, people buy images. If you look at Instagram and things like that, it's all about the image. My things would sell quicker when I took a nice picture. So that's a number one tip there. Number uh, fifth tip, don't be greedy. I only wanted to make 10 pound per trainer. That was my thing. After expenses, 10 pound. The reason a lot of the, the things that uh, were on my eBay didn't sell was because I would actually want to make too much money. As soon as I went back to my margins of 10 pound per item, which was just my thing, and yours can, your margins can be anything, they would sell straight away. So 
So we got that. So I'm gonna give you an example now, okay, of what I bought and how much I made. So, Night Metcon. If you type in Night Metcons, okay, I did this with a good friend. Uh, we, I wasn't even actually planning to go into the Nike store. Here's a funny story. I think we had gone to buy some stuff for the studio. I said, oh, let me, let me run into the Nike store. It was right next door. I think we had like 15 minutes before the shop closed. I walked in and I saw these trainers called Night Metcon and I sold them before and I knew that these were going to sell. I just had this gut feeling. So I bought three pairs of these. Okay, and I paid $17.50 per trainer. $17.50 per trainer. I put it on an eBay auction for 35 pound. Okay, so I, I'd already worked out my price that if I sold for 35, I'd make the profit that I'd want. I'd make more than 10 pound. I always charge six pound 50 shipping. Right, now here's a way of making money, even on your shipping. I charge six pound 50 for shipping, uh, which is through Herm, and I ship it out to her through Hermes. Okay, now Hermes will charge me per trainer as low as £2.58. So I'd make profit on my shipping as well. If I wanted recorded delivery, that was £3.58. But I'd still make uh, profit on the shipping. So, here's the thing. Those are my costs, all right? So I paid £17.50, I put it up to auction at £35. I had shipping costs that I knew was gonna be in there, that was gonna add to the overall cost of £6.50. I actually sold these for £55. Person paid the £6.50 um, shipping total that they paid me was 61.50. Now, 61.50, 17.50, what I paid looks good so far. So let's take out the fees that I paid for Hermes, three pound fifty-eight, and I did it recorded delivery. All right. The reason being, I thought that person deserved to have a little bit extra on their shipping because they paid me so well. All right. eBay fees on this sale was eight pound. So the profit was 61.50, which was what the person paid me. Minus my expenses uh, for eBay and for shipping, all right, and also the purchase cost. I made £32 on those trainers and I sold them three times now. Three times, and that was me walking into a store just because I was, because you guys walk past shops all the time. You walk past shops all the time. So instead of spending money, why don't you make money? So I made cash on that £32.43, all right? So simple, simple maths. Now, people may say, oh, do you know what, Denzel, I, I listen to your podcast, I wanna talk about properties and making money. Well, let me, let me show you something. How could your eBay sales translate into having a property portfolio, all right? I wanna show you how, if you did this four hours to two hours a week, could then get you into properties. That's the real thing that we wanna talk about. So let me just show you this here. So go back to the profit that I was making on average, 328. And I've gotta be honest, I don't really do eBay as much anymore. I've got too many things going on uh, and the cash flow within the business and different things is happening, but I still do it. So if you ask any of the guys, as you watch my Instagram, I'm always showing you things that I'm posting up, parcels that I'm sending out, all right? The reason being, I like the hustle and I'm trying to teach my children how to, now here's the thing, my daughter, uh, he's 16. I was just thinking of her age and her mum will kill me if she sees this. Right, okay, uh, 16. Now she earns £4.50 an hour, right, as a waitress. She'll work four or five hour shifts to come out with maybe £25. I said to my daughter, I would invest £100 if you go and buy some trainers, all right, and you may have to work two, three hours a week. That's it. And she could walk away with 328. Why are we not teaching our children to be entrepreneurial? Why is my daughter working for £4.50? Now, I'm not discrediting the £4.50, but I wanted to show her that she could make far more money doing this than working, you know, doing something that she really doesn't like. All right, so, go back to what we said, profit free to a. If I times that over the year, and I did that every month, that's just shy of £4,000. Now, if I times that by four years, if you were consistent every month for four years, where you are, so this is not adding any extra money, you'd have 16,000 pound. Now, that's 16,000 pound plus another 2,000 pounds, so I wanna be realistic with the amount of money it takes to buy a property. Up north, you would be able to buy a property with the money that you made from eBay, okay, have a, buy a property up north in North Yorkshire that would give you an extra 300 pound a month. So a lot of people say, I can't get into properties, I've got no money. Well, what if you decided today that I'm gonna start an eBay business, buying low, selling high, dedicating two, three hours a week, that is it. In four years, you'd have your first property. If you did that every year, okay, every year, I would say, and you added that first property up, 
you'd be able to buy a property every two to three years. Every time you added a property, I would say you get to two years to, to a point where you'd be able to, in say eight to nine years, buy a property every year, and that's taking none of your money from your career, your job, or anything like that. Now, the question is, if you're 25 years old, could you start this and by the time you're 40, you have a property portfolio of 10 to 15 properties? 100%. And all you've got to do is start off an eBay business. I'm not asking you to cut back on your expenses and get rid of Netflix. Don't buy no trainers. Don't do nothing like that. I'm asking, would you take two hours per week, okay, to sell products on eBay? I'm going to give you one more tip. If Nike and stuff like that doesn't work for you, there are sites where you can pick up stuff for free. Companies are being liquidated every day. Every day companies are being liquidated and, and for whatever reason going out of business and they have to get rid of stock. Some stock they won't sell, other stock they'll just give for free. There are sites that you can go for free and pick up stuff for free and put it on eBay. That will take you no time at all. You gotta go over there, pick it up and then sell it. Now, if you don't wanna pay the 30% uh, eBay fees, you've got Facebook Marketplace. It doesn't cost you anything. So, you know, all that 13% I've been charged, okay, I, could, I didn't want anyone coming to my house. All right, I didn't want anyone knowing where I lived or anything like that. But Facebook Marketplace is a great place to sell money. So listen, our key thing is about how you make money. The, what I want to ask you is, will you start today and go in, okay, I've got my job, brilliant, but I need to earn more money. Will you set up an eBay business? If not, why not? If not, why not? And if you won't do it, I think then you have to look at your mindset and ask your question, is it, is it laziness? Is it fear? Okay, or are you just a dreamer? If you want to become financially free, you have to take massive action. This is my way of taking massive action. And to be honest, I'm a high earner. Do you know what I mean? So I actually don't need to do this, but I still do it. Why? Because I never wanted to trust just one set of income. Now, ideally, if I get my daughter to do this for me, we could share in the profits. And I maybe we could drive this up to 500 pound a month. Do you know what I mean? Now, if I had 500 pound coming up every month and I didn't share the profits and I saved with my daughter and just said, look, you know, if you make 500 pound a month, all right, uh, we're talking about then going into uh, the £6,000, £6,000 a year. Do you know what? In two to three years, I would be able to buy my daughter a property just from eBay. Just throwing it out there. So listen, that was a quick little video. Uh, hopefully, you'll find some value in that. The one thing I'd say, please obviously check out the website as well because we have a free ebook that talks about the mindset and all the things that you need for financial management. But also, we've got Taster Days coming up in October and in November on our financial breakthrough workshop. Okay, that's gonna happen in January. It's gonna launch in January, but we're gonna be doing the tasters in October and November, and there will be limited spaces. Only 20 people will be able to get on this, and that's gonna be done with a good friend, Sue Clark, and David Hall. So watch out, it's gonna be amazing. All right, God bless you, and see you soon. Bye.